Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Live. It's Patty and Carrie. Yes. Hi, guys. From Studio R12 Stencils. And we have some hippie noodle we have some things stuff. to blow today. We've got stuff going on. We have on. some good stuff. Yeah. We have a lot of education for you today. Making sure that our live is on, that we have good audio, checking all the things. While we're doing that, make sure you share where you're from if you're hopping on and what your weather is doing. I think the weather did the same for everybody in the United States this week. <laughs> <laughs> we all got rain. <laughs> rain. Okay, so we are good. So let's talk about some things. First off, Let's make sure that you are following us um, on YouTube. Yes, YouTube. So we have switched our content. Um, so for those of you who are new to this, um, what we're doing here, um, we're doing lives to be educational and we're trying to just really interact with what you want to hear and what your questions are. So we wanted to in real time answer your real questions. So if you have questions, pop them in there. We want to hear your questions. We want to answer them. We might not get to every one of them. Um, last week, Thunder, typer over here was going so fast she couldn't keep up you know <laughs> no we and we spent it was we a spent a, few, a couple hours yeah every answering week. the questions yeah. afterwards and making sure you get your answer they just might not all be this way but if you have anything that you want to know about even techniques yeah hey you know how do you spatter or wrote it whatever the mm -hmm. thing is like we're happy to help you do that happy to show you yeah. so um anyway but then we switched our projects to youtube and so if you hop over to YouTube, to Studio R12, um, on our YouTube channel, this is going to be next week's... Yeah, um, this weekend, Saturday this, morning this, at 6 a.m. Okay, Saturday morning at 6 a.m. This will be the project that we will be teaching. Mm -hmm. And this showcases how to use a stencil and then use stencils through a stencil um, to get the details on there. And it's a really cool technique that you're going to want to know about because you can do it for Halloween, Christmas, nursery... Um, all well, those kinds of things. And we also use a little um, tips and tricks on how you can just use the tools you have yeah. to do some of those things. Yes. And so some of these were actually done. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to make you wait and go see it. <laughs> so, and we were talking about this um, a little bit earlier, how with, with the lot, with the, with the YouTube videos, mm -hmm. just being clean project, not all the chatting yeah. and all the question answering and stuff, it makes it easier for you to paint along. Yeah. And then, as I've taught across the country over 35 years, um, or 30 years, I guess, um, as I've done that, about a quarter of every class would be like, what'd you do? Like, can you do that again? Can you show me again? With YouTube, you drag that little bar over and you can repeat yeah. it. And if you have an iPad or mm -hmm. a phone that you're watching on, you can pinch and zoom and make it bigger so you can see. Yeah. We're really blessed by technology these days. So we really, you can have a class anywhere that you are. Absolutely. So I'm excited by that. Agreed. Okay, so we do have, let's talk about um, giveaways really quick today. Giveaways. Who's feeling lucky today? Put your hand up in the chat. <laughs> it's going to be a very singy day today. Yes. So, no sound effects this week. Yes. We're going to do singing. Um, we're little. singing. This is a musical. Um, this is a musical live. Well, Welcome. We were singing <laughs> sisters earlier. We were. Yeah. <laughs> Like for Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> okay, so today we have some stencils we're going to give away live. So make sure you're commenting and we will, um, at random times, be pulling out someone to win. And then for those of you who can't join us live, Love this. we do have brushes that we're going to give away. So like, comment, and share, mm -hmm. and we will pick someone out of everybody who did that. We're yeah. actually going to give away three sets of brushes and we'll announce those tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, and then if I can ask for little hearts, that would be so sweet. Um, we go back, I go back and watch. Um, I don't have a screen in front of me that I can see what's going on and how things looked and what the questions were and the interactions were and all of that. I'm really curious, like you don't own um, a stencil company and then not want to know what your customers are asking you about. So I go back every week and I'd love to see some of those little floating hearts or the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> because I think they look so cool. And I think... If there's something that we're showing you that just really means something to you, if you do that, that would be just awesome. And then share with your painting groups as well. Um, you know, that's a good place to share content like this yes. because maybe they don't know about what we've got going on and how much content we're giving you. So anyway, if you can do that, that would be awesome. And sharing is caring. So um, let's get started. Let's get started. Okay. With, and we're going to start with stencil storage. Okay. Stencil storage. You ready? Um, we're going to just touch on stencil storage for a hot minute because I think that's something that everybody that starts buying stencil um, is going to want to know about. Okay, so 
I'm going to start with an obvious thing with our little project that we've got here. Um, I call these like almost like essential stencils or stencils that you have to have because there's something that you're going to want to have in your toolbox and they're just little pattern stencils that you can throw a snowflake in the background. You can put a little check on check detail on something. Um, you can do some like um, chevron detail. You can do dots. All the things are in here. So buy the ones that appeal to you. You put it together with a little scrapbook um, um, grommet thing. Um, that scrapbook, do you know what these are called? Scrapbook, whatever these things are. Scrap. You know, they twist on and um, attach the scrapbook pages. Okay, I think a post maybe. Um, anyway, so that's a good way to store little stencils. And if ours come with a hole already cut in it for that so that you can put them on to your little post. Um, but if you have other stencils, we will forgive you. Um, but if you have other stencils, then you can just punch a hole with a hole punch and then put it on there that way. So going to my all time favorite as of now, I never knew this existed and it has made my life much better. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the punch. This is gonna be an affiliate link down below. I shared that for you. Carrie is amazing at putting all the links down below. So if you wanna know something that we used in our video or something like that, then just go ahead and click into, what's it, description, I think? Um, when when we're on you on YouTube. Oh, when it's on YouTube. I'm yeah. being silly. Okay, no, it's going to be in the, yes, in the I'll, comments. Yes, I'll just Facebook. put it in the comments yeah. below. Sorry, I'm on the wrong channel. Okay, so we're going to use this um, punch, which will be linked. And um, and then we also have, that's on our blog, right? Um, the, Amazon, the Amazon links are okay. on our blog. Yeah, yeah, so anything that we don't carry on our website, um, on our website, there's blog posts um, right on the homepage. And you can go to and find the one that is talking about our Amazon links and it gives all the links in there. And that way you always have a place that you can find them. <clears throat> okay, so what I love about these little rings is they're just little rings and you punch holes in your stencil edge. And this is holding up a lot of weight. But when you see how fast and easy, I forgot to tell people what we were going to be doing. Okay, guys, we're going to be showing you later on at the very end how to resuscitate a dead brush. Okay, so you're going to want to stick around for that. And then we're going to show you what we posted a little bit earlier on Facebook about the thing that blew every yes. one of our design team's hippie noodles. So that is coming right after I get done talking about the storage. So just so you know what we're on track for. Um, okay, so when you see how easy these pull out, this is just this little punch that looks like a, a push pin from a bulletin board. Um, and they pop right back in on the disc. And they are super durable and super, you saw how strong they are, it's amazing. What I like about these that might not be obvious is I've color coded. These are some Christmas stencils. These are not all of our stencils. This is just ones that we've used and then I pop them into these. Um, these are Christmas stencils. So I color coded them in candy cane. So that, that way when I'm sitting there with a stack of these books, these are the pink ones are all my lettering stencils that we have had cut lately. And so you can see that I can see the difference in what the book is. So you could have these literally stacked on a shelf and then you can be like, hey, you get out of the way, pop that one there. Now you've got your stencils and then watch how cool this is. Shit, I just did it. Okay, so you can flip the pages. Let me tell you, we just got a comment from Harpa, and Harpa said, I, Hi, love, Harpa. I love the discs, game changer, it never is. been so organized since I started using them. Cheers, Cheers Harpa. Harpa, perfect observation. Yes. Tell us what's in your tumbler today. I bet you know what's in mine. <laughs> okay, so these are a game changer, and they come in a bunch of colors. You can get them big, and you can get them clear. Um, you can choose your colors. Um, there's a million colors to get. We just got the um, just the combo set just to play with them, and we have not stopped talking about them yet. And I don't think I will. If I was to choose, that would be how I would do this, um, store my stencils. Looking back over here, this is um, such a convenient way to store stencils. Um, it is... Little curtain clips. Okay, so these are for those little cafe curtains and things like that. That is a curtain rod, and we've just mounted it under the shelf instead of on the wall. 
Okay, so that is how you can make stencil storage on your craft wall if you don't already have, um, you know, a place like a closet or something that you could mount that to. Uh, but you can hang a shelf and that, that's a, um, I think the shelf is an Ikea shelf, but the link down below will take you to the curtain rod that's strong enough to be able to hold your stencils up. And that is a really great way to do it too. And watch this. You can store a lot of stencils on there. So like, it's such a cool, cool way to store. And then the one other one that I want to talk about. And in our retail shop, we have um, painting workshops, okay? And so we hang our stencils differently there. So, did you hear that? That sound is so satisfying. <laughs> it's like, Whoa. oh, it's sound effect week. <laughs> okay, so these are, what'd you call them? C tabs. C tabs, okay, and there'll be a link below. And these are just sticky little tabs that you put on there. Um, I don't like mixing these, these tabs with this book because they can tend to bend over and catch your stencil. And a bent stencil is a bad stencil. Um, it, you, I don't know how you can fix it. If anybody has fixed a bent stencil, please share with me because I don't know how to do well, it. Well, someone had just asked, Marissa just messaged us and said, Hi, Marissa. How, to, how do you fix a broken stencil? You can fix a stencil that has paint and medium stuck on it, but you cannot fix a bent stencil that I am aware of. Um, I would try. Um, a blow dryer and heating it and see if that relaxes it. You could go into, so this is the kind of questions I love. I think this is just awesome. Yeah. Um, you could take the um, temporary adhesive if you had a piece that was bent. Let me bend this one. We'll just Let's break a stencil together. Okay. My so. anxiety is through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so we're gonna go here and we're gonna bend this stencil, okay? So it's broken because that's like, that obviously is gonna bleed under and you can't do the thing. You could tape it down, okay? Just like thinking outside the box. I own a stencil company, so I don't have to use broken stencils. So um, I'm glad that we're doing this together because that's not something that I have to deal with myself. <laughs> I'm a little spoiled stencil princess is what I am. Okay. Just see how big my eyes are right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you could tape the stencil down and make it flat. Okay, so that's one way that you could do it. That's what Sherry said. Sherry said, I have bent one and bent it back the other way okay. and it works. Let's try that. So we can go here and we can bend it back. And that was Sherry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sherry. And Darlie, it feels okay. the same way. She yeah. wants to cry too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for the lunchtime anxiety. I hope you don't get indigestion. Okay, that worked really well. Um, now, it wouldn't be like I if you ended up with a stencil that came to you broken, um, I wouldn't expect that you would fix it yourself and do that. But um, if you broke it yourself, I think that's a great answer. Yes. And then you could also take the adhesive on the back side if you had something that was protruding and you could just adhese it around the broken area. And I think that that would work. Let me find something to stick it to. Um, give me this. And then um, Elizabeth just asked, how do you clean your stencils and how often should it be done? We have a video coming on that very soon. We do. Yeah. And then that holds that down That's, very, yeah, very, very well. well. Yeah. Awesome. And then one thing about this um, temporary adhesive is that it actually, let me show you on here. If you yeah, haven't gonna, seen this in previous lives. Um, the same books keep getting recycled. I'm going to have to shake this up and make a new one. Um, but we did a video. What was the, this was the Christmas one. The fall. No, it was the, oh, the fall, fall plaid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. I'll tell you what. The fall plaid, this, this stencil is, here, let's take this out here. Okay, this stencil, when you do it this way, it does lines that way. And then when you rotate it and you do them again, then it self-shades, the ones that get done twice. So you have like a gradient. It is beautiful. I was so, I was mind blown it was just a moment for me so this has got these lines are very floppy so i've done the adhesive on the back of this you can use these over and over again and the adhesive will still stick so i'm going to pop that back in there if you noticed this did not negatively stick to the stencil behind it um, that has not been a problem so you can use your adhesive low tack um, i wouldn't do the spray all over because it's going to be so sticky um, but yeah, so you can use that and then that's how you can hold down a broken stencil. 
Pat asked if you could use an iron with a cloth over the stencil. I don't know, Pat. If you try that, will you let us know? Yes, please That would do. be so awesome. Yeah, I don't have, I might have an iron here, but I don't have cloth. I don't have the, the tools here, but I'll try it at home, and I will also let you know if, I, if oh. it works. <clears throat> okay. Here's the hippie noodle moment, okay? The one of the most com the, the very top question that we ever get asked um, when we're doing, um, when we're just in everyday conversations is, how do you keep from bleeding under your stencils? And last week, we put a video on YouTube that is stencil basics. Mm -hmm. So if you are struggling with that, and I'll tell you, and if you guys don't mind sharing with the other people that are in the chat, um, it's the chat on this one, right? This is the chat. We're chatting. I'm so grandmother as far as my technology usage and vocabulary. If I had a vocabulary test, I would have it up. <laughs> okay, the dome brushes make all the difference in the world, and we are going to be giving away three, three sets. sets of dome brushes. And um, if you like, share and comment between now and tomorrow morning. And But the dome brushes make all the difference in the world. Flat things tend to splay under your stencil, but watch that video. It's going to give you all the details. You're linking that down below. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Second question is, I don't know how to choose colors for my project. Okay. And this is such an important question because if you paint things and they're ugly, you know, or they don't appeal to you when you get them done, like then it, you're going to be sad and then you'll feel like you've wasted money and time and all of that. So we don't want any of that happening. So get out a couple examples and show you the, the thing that blew our hippie noodles all over the place. I like we went on lunch and we were taking pictures of the houses and we were picking leaves and we were doing all that just because we were so excited. So about 20 years ago, I bought this set of buttons from um, Michael's probably at the time. And um, they were color coded as a box of buttons. And I just adored the yellow, the green and the peach and the coral and all of that in there. So sometimes when you're choosing a project, it's as easy as finding something that inspires you. Okay, so put those back. So if you look around in your house, if you look around in your internet travels, if you look around when you go to the store, you see a beautiful coat that's done in, you know, black and taupe or something like that. And you just like, I love that, it's not my style, like I, I don't want that jacket right now, I can't afford it, whatever. But you can take a picture of it with your phone and then bring that home and you can borrow that palette. We call it palette borrowing, okay? So you can get inspired by a palette of things that you see and um, that is a really easy way to do that. And today I'm going to show you a couple of tools. So people ask us, probably the third question people ask us all the time is, what color do we use? Yes. Okay, so this is, a valid question and we're not ready to to share the brand and all of that yet because we're working on all the back-end things that you have to do legalese and contracty <laughs> things and all the crud so we're still working on that but we will be releasing that in the future at some point when we get it done when I was doing magazine articles and books and publishing and all of that this was my deco art book and I was a deco art artist and I made um, little colored chips on the back of old business cards. This is a, um, a baseball trading card sleeves um, so that you can just buy those at the, um, at the, the good Lord, at the- uh, Well, you can get them at Walmart. You can just get them at Walmart. Can you get them at Walmart? Mm -hmm. oh, I did not yeah. know they carried them there. Okay, good. So that's even easier for most of us. Um, I was thinking of the, um, Good night, Office, Office Depot. <laughs> Office Depot, that's the one. We have um, been in a pandemic for a year and a half, and I haven't <laughs> been out, you know, out of my town anyway. So it's it's been a significant amount of time since I've been to the mall or anything else. What's that thing called? It's called a mall. A mall. Yeah. Yeah, we have a long drive to get to one. Yeah, we're an hour <laughs> from everywhere here, so it's it's a long way. Anyway, what I did is I took every paint that I had in deco art and I painted a little bit on the chip, and it'll make your paper bow when you put it on there. But then when it dries, it flattens. And then I just made a book and I put things by Color Family in there. And then when they discontinued them, I went ahead and kept the chip because then I knew what color the discontinued color was. So, and I did those by Color Family too. So you can take the paints that you have at your house and the tool that I'm gonna show you is coming up next. And that's how you can use these 
with the hippie noodle tool that I'm about to show you. Okay, and then the other thing that you can do is you can go get a Sherwin Williams or a Bear Paint. Go to go buy get one every one of those little chips at the hardware store, and just make yourself a book of colors, and then you can have colors to match things to and lay things out. I love having the cards separate. If each one of these had a separate little thing, it would be so much handier than like, I don't know if you've ever done this, but like, you know, you're trying to pick house colors and you bend this one this way and you want to see it with the other color and then you go find the other thing and then pretty soon you're a mangled mess of a, of a chip book. Um, I've done this too. I've killed many chip books. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really good way to get chips and see color. Now let me show you why you're going to want to do that. Okay, then we're going to grab out the iPad. Okay, um, you can use your phone as well. This is a, now we probably don't want to show you what my password is on my thing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. I've got funny stories to tell about screen sharing. Okay. Are we good right there? Okay. All right. So this program that we're going to be going to is in, it is color.adobe.com. Okay. Okay. I'll share that right now. And while you're cleaning your glasses, I'm going to do a giveaway. Giveaway. And She's feeling lucky. We have a stencil that says you're never too old for a snowball fight. I love that one. And our winner of this is Samantha Fuller. Congratulations, Samantha. Samantha is listening while driving. She promises that she's not watching. Please. <laughs> Since you are being safe, you'll get an extra stencil sent to you. We will, uh, we will message you and get your address and get this sent your way. That's so awesome. Thank you, Samantha, for listening. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to um, color.adobe.com. This is an Adobe product, um, it's a, and you don't have to have an account to use it at its basic level. And you go to, and I'm going to replace this image. Actually, first we'll go to Pinterest. And do, 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 do. how did I lose my page? This is when you're going to laugh at me trying to use an iPad because... <laughs> I'm fairly pathetic at this. Okay, so we're going to go down to our search on Pinterest, and we've got nursery ideas, so that was there. And I had chosen this little guy right here. Um, Carrie and I were talking about this just the, um, like two hours ago, how non-colored our world is yes. in decor right now. It is a very neutral. Um, we did notice at, at Market that the color mustard was everywhere, but that's because everything is so muted that the mustard really pops off mm -hmm. of it. Anyway, um, those of you that are afraid of color, um, not afraid of color, but like afraid of the knowledge of color, we were telling each other that color is like an ocean. The knowledge of color is like an ocean. And today what we're gonna do is we got our socks and shoes off and we're gonna stand by the edge of the ocean of, the, of color. And we're not going to dive in deep and drown, okay? So we're just gonna take a little dive. But this is a really pretty palette and I think it's a very, just, it's age neutral or, gender neutral it's it could be boy or girl it could be um you know it could this could be my living room you know like this is a beautiful palette and it if i chose something that was pretty like this i wouldn't necessarily have to pick it for a nursery i could pick it for my dining room you know so when you pick a palette i can pick that to paint a sign that goes in my living room or my bathroom you know like so color can go anywhere. You know, you can have a pink bathroom, a pink baby's room, a pink girl's room. You can have a pink prison and it will calm the prisoners down. So like you can use these colors anywhere. Okay, so we're gonna go out to the other tab that I can't find. Okay, so I did a screen snip and I'll show you how to do a screen snip because that's why I couldn't find that. So when I open up that picture on my iPad, I am upside down because I was charging. Oops, I turned my wheel, you're welcome. <laughs> this is very awkward, they're chuckling at me. Okay, that's okay. It's probably pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so you take the power button and the top um, volume button and you just give it a squeeze and it makes a little screen snip and it'll be in your photos. Okay, so that's how you can get you a screen snip. And it's different on the, I have an Android phone and you just pass your hand across the front of the screen and it'll screen snip that way. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Okay, so we'll go back to this app. I have 
gone to replace image. I click the photo gallery and I'm going to show you why this matters in just a minute. Choosing my photo, I'm going to click use. Now this has gone and found the red in my um, Pinterest button, but it's giving me this little guy right here. It's giving me that color, but I can drag it around. I can drag this up to the green. I can drag this over to my mustard color. Okay. Now it's given me this palette in a chip form. What I can do with this is I can take out my bottle of paint. I can match my bottle of paint to the chips. You can take a picture, a screen snip on our website when you want to know what colors we used. Mm. Take that screen snip and it will show you what the palette is. It's magic. Okay, so then, excuse me, you can go back over here to color wheel and you can click on, this is saying that tan is the main color. And this is where it gets a little bit more oceany. So if you are afraid of this, put on your life jacket or don't go in, you know, that's fine. But you can choose analogous. So that's going to give you a beautiful palette using one of those colors. So if, for example, you knew that mustard was the hottest color of the year, you could take a picture of your mustard color, go over here, and it's going to tell you color families and good color um, associations. Okay, so it's chosen that tan. You can go monochromatic. Look at how gloriously beautiful that is. Like that is a beautiful, that's a beautiful yes. color family. And let me say that hippie noodles are being blown right now. It's so cool. Like everyone is like, <sighs> yeah, in the comments. Yeah, this is like magic, 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 magic. Okay, then you can go into your triad and it's going to show you how to pull in a little um, other colors. You can go um, complementary, which is going to be your opposites. And so like, what a great way, you know, you want to use your, your tan, but maybe you do want that pop of, of teal. Like this is like stuff you might not ever think to associate together. And I want to kind of go ahead and segue from here to real life examples and kind of like how you would use this information. I feel like this is a really good example. So I'm going to set that aside. And if you guys are just joining us, we're going to be doing drawings. If you like, share and comment. And our new content for project videos and the painting and the how to do the things is over on YouTube. So if you subscribe and click the little bell, then that will um, tell you when we have new content and we're doing, gosh, once or twice a week. Yeah, we have, and then plus we have, short videos too. We have our quick videos. We <clears> have <throat> our large, longer tutorials mm -hmm. and technique videos that are on Saturday mornings. But we have some coming up that we're releasing multiple videos mm -hmm. that are like part one, part two, or learn this and we'll show you this later. So you're going to want to make sure that yeah. you have the bell rung yes. <laughs> so yeah. that you can be notified Absolutely. and don't miss anything. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to be sharing from my house. So if you want to see um, me in the kitchen I bought <laughs> off of Facebook, then join us because I literally bought the kitchen that I'm in from Facebook and it like fit in my kitchen and we remodeled and it... It worked. It was magic. And I promise that along with seeing Patty's Kitchen that you'll also really, you'll really enjoy love, yeah. the videos yeah. that we did. It's some, it, they're things that you guys ask about all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We really have taken, we take your, literally Carrie, um, she takes the um, list of questions and she makes another side task and then she puts it into calendars and then we discuss it and talk <laughs> about it. And that is how we decide on the content. So you guys are telling us what you want. So that is magic. Okay. So we've got our colors and the teal is on this other example. Maybe I will go ahead and do that first. Okay. So in my house, um, I have chickens and um, I have probably got, I think my granddaughter came over. Um, shout out to Emily. Hi, Em. Um, she came over and she's like, Grandma, you know, you have 10 chicken things in this one room. And I was like, I know. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I like chickens. What can I say? Our chickens are funny and they, they are, they're a little bit wild. While we're doing shout outs, Lena's with us today. Lena, hi. Lena, Lena, Lou. Okay. Um, Lena is going to be coming back and doing some um, more video content with us. She went back to teaching school. Of course, it was a wild year. She had a baby Leo last year and he's just, last night he was standing <laughs> and then he moved his hands off the thing and he stayed standing. So he's getting there. He's doing all the, the walkie talkie things. Okay. So we've got this project and in my house, I love a burgundy accent. Okay, so I knew 
I wanted a burgundy accent, but if, like so in the case of this, we have, um, we have this neutral tan. I know I want tan. I mean, I've got a tan couch and tan other accessories. What can I accent that with? Same thing was going on here, and that was this teal. And then Carrie reminded me earlier that um, you don't just isolate a color and pop a color right in the middle of it, because if you do that, then it's just gonna be an isolated color, okay? So when you have something that you want the two of them in there, you gotta figure out how to work it into the rest of your board. Sometimes that can be drop shadow, Sometimes that can be distressing or antiquing around the edge. In this case, I've got chicken wire on the edge. I don't know if you can tell. I love layering stencils. I think that is where the magic happens. Um, so if I got chickens, I need chicken wire, right? So what I did here is I went in and undercoated my sign with um, some red paint underneath there. And then I used like just a chunky top coat and they scraped off through the black and to make it show. So I've got punctuated red throughout the background of this. So that brings my red into my arrow. And then I have my teal here and I've got a white drop shadow. Notice that my letters are this white color. And so that's bringing this white into the arrow and then it's bringing the white out into the sign. So that's unifying my colors. <clears throat> then for my teal, what I did is I did the, um, the chicken wire in a gray, but then I just tickled it with a little bit of the teal all the way around the edge. It's not reading teal, it's hinting at teal. So that's how I brought those colors around. When you get a suggestion of colors like this, okay, I'm gonna bring it back up, like this, that's what you can do is you can bring in a hint of this and bring the colors back and forth into each other and that's how you keep things from being isolated. I'm gonna give you another example. I hope that you're finding this interesting how to choose colors for when you're stenciling, and even for any other art project that you're doing. Um, Sherry asked, do you add black to red to make burgundy? Um, you can, actually I have, is she, is she reading my cliff notes? Mm -hmm. Ha! Okay, so if you, I did these little color um, things, color swatches, um, I looked for the purest paints, and the pure paints are gonna be the ones that when you do a wash or water in them, that they, um, fade across and stay strong and vibrant. Um, if you use something that's super muddy, like gray pink or something like that, it will not wash, it will not be see-through, um, that kind of thing. But yes, you can definitely make a burgundy color that's with black added. And then that was this color with white added to it. Okay, and then this side is with white added in varying degrees. <clears throat> My throat is going blah, blah, blah. Okay, so, and then that's the wash of the color. And I did that with purple, that's the black. And so you can make a darker purple or a nice lavender purple um, by adding black or white. And then if you make your black color and then you start adding white to it, and that's how you can get a graduated, more um, neutral tone. Neutral just generally means something mixed with white. Okay, so you neutralize it. This orange is vibrant <clears throat> and this is more neutralized and it's um, less vibrant, so. Okay, when you're doing a sign that is a little bit more complicated, um, there's a lot of words on this Pledge of Allegiance sign. Um, this is one of the most popular 4th of July type seasonal signs that we've ever made. Um, it is, it's got the chalk typography. It's got all the things. These are stencils on our websites um, and our website. So um, you can go find it there and Carrie probably have the link for you. <clears throat> so what I did here with our colors is we don't want an isolated color because um, the example I was using earlier when we were talking about it is if you're an artist and you go to a party and the party has all engineers and all the engineers are talking about is circuit boards and how cool circuit boards are. And you're like, but purple is pretty, you know? And so like, you're not gonna fit in because you're isolated, right? You don't have anybody to bounce off of. They're not interested in what you're talking about. Um, that makes it not, not okay in a way. So what you do to make colors not be isolated is you give them friends and you give them a hug. So what you do is I took my blue. I knew I wanted red, white, and blue, so that was easy. Black as a background, settles everything down. So I took my blue and I gave it a hug on the top and the bottom, okay? And then to make sure that it wasn't lonely at the top and the bottom. Hey, you wanna turn that around. Okay. There we go. Okay, we got it on. 
with the overhead camera, it cuts off a okay. portion of it so they couldn't see the top and bottom. Okay. <laughs> Can we? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is this helpful this way? Let me know what I need to do. Yes, guys. that's good. Okay. So we got the hug at the top and the bottom. Okay. And then I've gone into the middle and given it a middle child syndrome and put some of that blue right there in the middle. So now I've got blue in at least three places and I actually have it in the and as well. Okay. Then I took my red. You wouldn't want to have like red all in the middle and then blue at the bottom. That wouldn't be appealing. So what I did with the blue is I started and I punctuated it going down, down the board with the hug on the top and the bottom. And with the white, I did the same thing. Okay. So adding banding is a really good way to carry color and stuff like that. So I've got the white all the way from the very top to the very bottom. And that is how you can make a nice color palette out of something complicated like this. There's a lot of words but you can take it and just know that hugs help and then middle children are also useful. They're gonna be your peacekeeper or your troublemakers. I'm a middle child, ask me how I know about the troublemaker. Okay, and then these are gonna be like the, just like the grounding neutrals. And then this, what's interesting, so this brings us back over to our hippie noodle blowing um, program. If you take a picture of this, it's gonna tell you that this is not white. This is reading as white on here because you're on a dark contrasty board, but this is gonna be a creamy grayish color, a neutral color. Um, so when you're, take, when you're borrowing palettes, um, you take your picture, you bring it into this program, it's gonna read this to you. Let me show you a couple more examples in this program because I think this is so valuable. Okay, let me get my glasses. Um, let me ask a question. Yeah, ask quick. questions. Um, Elizabeth wants to know how do you get the sticky off the back of your stencils? Um, so I don't. I, so if somebody else knows the answer to this, I want to say somebody told me rubbing alcohol. Um, yeah. Um, but I haven't done it because I own a stencil company, you know, and I, so I <laughs> like, I just get another stencil cut, you know what I mean? Um, but it's a very good question. Um, I just, I don't normally put the sticky on the back. I do it only with very extreme things and I like it to stay sticky because I want it to be sticky the next time I yeah. pick it up. If and I needed it sticky once, I'm going to need it sticky the second time. I'm also going to take a um, drink, take a drink break. You can have, a, you can have a drink break Cheers. Um, and we're going to do another giveaway. We're going to do our Merry Christmas stencil. Such a really stencil. pretty font and it is going to go to Gerilyn 2. Congratulations, Gerilyn 2. All right, let's get back into this color stuff. Okay, I did some other screen snips. So I'm gonna go over to that extract theme and we're gonna go replace this image. And we're gonna go to our photo library. So if I was choosing pillows for my sofa, or if I had a pillow in my house and I wanted to paint a sign for the wall over in the dining room and I wanted them to go together, I could take a picture of the pillow I can screen advance. Now this is a really cruddy picture, but I can just drag this little thing over here. It's gonna tell me what colors, let me get it on there, what color yellow and what color gray that is, right? So then I'm going to, and so that's gonna give me this palette down here. It's gonna show me what's gonna go with it and it's got this blue dot down there. So that is how I can go find the colors that are in a pillow. So let's change our image, replace image. I took a picture of the house color I like. This is the colors I painted my chicken coop, actually. We have a one of those little sh storage buildings, and it's all gingerbread-y, and it's just the cutest little chicken house. Okay, and so let's go. When we did this project right here, the color palette was inspired by a napkin, and it's not this napkin, but I wanted this kind of outdoorsy adventure kind of thing. So I went and looked up other napkins and it's going to give you these chips. And then if I want to know what gray he is there, now I can match these chips or those chips up to this, see if I need to mix my colors at all. And now I know exactly what colors I'm going to use to paint my project. You can take a picture of this from our website. You can take a picture of something you've seen on Pinterest. You can take a picture of something you've painted from another person, whatever you're, you're into, but that is how you can find palettes. And it, it kind of might sound a little cheaty, but like 
all of these things have already been done. You know, you've already, everything has been color match, color painted, color da 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 da. You don't need to redo, you don't have to rethink the whole wheel, yeah. you know? So let's get another image. This is so helpful. So, so, so helpful. Um, can you tell I have boys? Oh, is that, is that glaring, Steve? Is that okay? Okay. So you can tell I have boys because I was like, oh, I have to go find out what this is. But this will tell you, you know, what colors, like that's a lot of colors, but how fun would that be in a little boy's room? You know, let's replace that image. Let's go for this little guy. I think this little guy is cool. So there's a lot going on here. And if you're not, if you're not a more advanced ocean writing color user, you could really make some mistakes if you were painting something with a lot of elements to it. Because you can be like, I want purple, and it might not turn out so well. So this is so fabulous because I can just drag this over here. I can go find out what color. I never would have guessed that that corn was more green yellow than, um, than yellow yellow. I, I'm reading that as yellow yellow. And then this is definitely leaning towards our, turqu our teal side. And then that gives us the kind of neutral that that is. So do you see how freaking amazing? <laughs> Poo, right? This is so fabulous. So anyway, and if we use our example, I'm going to go one more, and then we're going to show you how to resuscitate a dead brush. Yes. That you are going to want to stick around for a few more minutes. We're almost out of here. We're going to get some lunch. I hope you guys are having a good lunch. Okay, let's go into pink. I have seen so much pink gone wrong. Okay, so this is a nice, elegant, um, colored, let's do our little screen snip. Okay, so that's just the power button in the top button up there. We'll go into this. I hope that it's not too irritating watching me try to figure this out. Okay, so we'll bring this in and use, okay. So Sherry just commented and we love this. We were talking about this as well. I was watching, um, she was watching The Notebook and she saw a sweater that oh, she yeah, loved yeah. the colors and that's what she's gonna use on one of her projects. It's, it's so cool to do, you know? It is, once you start noticing, um, you know, and then what, if I can get everybody to just hear these words for a second, don't pretend like you're gonna know what the color is because when I'm looking at this baby's room, right? I'm looking over here, I drop this down on this crib. Now, I think this crib is probably more white than this photo is, okay? So knowing that, but when I, I chose this because of this photo, not because of what the real baby's room looked like. So I thought this neutral palette with this pink was lovely. So just because, um, just because it's not really that color, maybe that is a white crib, doesn't mean that you can't pull that neutral and be like, that's the neutral that I love with that pink. Okay, so I can go over here, see if I can grab. Yeah, this is really pixelated. Okay, so that has made a pretty nice pink. Okay, so see these two colors together, that's pulling my button color. I think, is that on there? Uh, there we go. Release. Okay, um, we'll go into this color. Okay, so this is showing a very, 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 very toned um, kind of neutral white. It's not really a white white. You can see it against the white background with this very soft, gosh, I don't even know what I would call that. It's, it's like almost an unpink, but that's a beautiful palette right there. So this is just such a valuable way to get the chip to be able to match it. Mm -hmm. You can mix your colors together to kind of do some of that. That's a whole nother story for a whole nother. We might have to do a live on that. Okay. Not a live, but a lesson on that. Okay. Who wants to know how to re resuscitate a paintbrush? I've got a secret weapon. Okay. So we've got a ginger grater. This is going to be an affiliate link. Okay. And I'm using the ginger grater because it's porcelain and it has this little well. I love the one with the well because it will hold things in it and I can um, use me mediums to clean things and stuff. So what we're going to use is my secret weapon for like 20 years. This is Winsor Newton um, Brush Cleaner and Restorer. This is what I love, love, love about this. Keep My head is sweaty and I'm making my eyeglasses fog up. Okay, 
Um, so this is for dried acrylic and oil color, and it is non-hazardous, biodegradable, and low vapor. Okay, so it is a, it's an amazing product. Now, what I will tell you is um, I had I had a client, a customer, um, that put this in a meat tray. This will eat plastic. Basically, paint is plastic. She put it in a meat tray, which is plastic, and she um, set it on her grand piano, and it ate through the meat thing, and then it started eating the varnish off of her grand piano. So this will take varnish off. Okay, so this will rescue and resuscitate. This is like the, uh, you know, the paddles for your heart when you're, when you're messed up, you know, things going on. So make sure that you have a bottle of this for when you mess up your brushes. Okay, I'll pour some of that out. I didn't take that plastic all the way off, so it's dribbling. And um, while we're doing this, yeah. Donna um, asked about if the grater would tear up your brush, so I know that you're going to talk yeah. about that. Yeah, the grater does not. Um, your use of the grater does. <laughs> yes. um, so if you, and I had a brush earlier that was the perfect example of a, maybe it's clean, maybe it's dirty brush, and then I cleaned it, and then, no, I don't have that example. Okay, dead brush. So this is a stencil brush that is hard okay this has got so much paint i can't push the bristles it's hard okay so we're gonna go in here and um i'll talk about the um the, the um pokey things here in a second but watch what happens when i get my brush in there so i'll push in there i might have to put a little bit more out the these dome brushes are so big that they um that they suck up a lot of the, the medium not like an excessive amount but Okay, get that on there. Now watch what happens. I'll just keep pushing on there. Now it's already releasing pink. Look at that. So it's just taking that paint and now it's my brush is starting to bend. Okay, and I can just keep working that in there. You got to get it saturated first and softened. And now my brush is bending. Okay, yeah, there we go. I probably have enough paint dried up in this brush so I could base coat a project. Like it's a lot of paint. Okay, and then to help it work through, this is the part that you want to be careful with. Um, you don't want to go across like that. You want to kind of tilt your brush back a little bit and drag it that way. Okay. The and way that your bristles yeah, go, not against your Not bristles. against the bristles, yeah. You want to drag the bristles towards you and not go back and forth. So let me say something real quick. You guys are asking a lot of questions and making a lot of comments because Facebook just told me I wasn't allowed to like your comments anymore because I've done too much. So Shoot. <laughs> we can still respect Facebook. questions, but we're not ignoring your nice comments. Facebook just won't allow me to like and love them. So we'll do that later. But that means we're getting a lot of questions and comments. Facebook. Okay, so notice <laughs> I'm gonna come over here on this palette and show you. Notice that my brush is now flexible and bending okay so that paint is nice and softened in that brush and now my job is to just get it worked in and then what I would do at this point I don't have running water right here um, that might be a hint about something we'll be doing in my kitchen maybe <laughs> um, but yeah so this is nice and working and so what I would do then is I go into my running water with soap and water and I would just um, work that out. I'm trying to do this so that you can kind of see the results. Get that kind of worked out. I'm gonna pinch that out. And, oops. Okay, ready? Look at that. Looky, 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 looky. How much movement it has. Look at, it's a resuscitated dead brush. Brought it back to life. Yes, isn't that fabulous? Magic, magic, magic. So if you have messed up, don't throw your brushes away. Get you a bottle of the brush cleaner. You're going to love it. And then this is the brush that I was showing earlier. Um, it had just a little bit of stuff in the end, and it released quite a bit of paint, and it didn't look dirty. But if you find that your flat brushes, if you use flat brushes, start hollowing in the middle, that's a sign that you have paint dried up here at the ferrule. Don't throw it away. Get some brush cleaner and then just resuscitate that brush. So that is how you can save money, save your brushes. I don't know how much this is, $6, $8, something like that. I don't know. Um, but having a bottle of this will save, can save you hundreds of dollars in brush carnage. 
So I think we have one more drawing. We have one more drawing. One, one more drawing. Who's the lucky winner going to be? The winner of the cookies for Santa is Angie Schwartz. Angie, congratulations. So Thank you message. so much for watching. Yes, and we'll message all of you who have won stencils. Yep. And then don't forget to come back tomorrow to see if you've won brushes. You mm -hmm. still have time to like, share, and comment. We will announce it. Yeah, 24 hours. Afternoon. Yep. Yeah, more than 24 hours. Yeah, well, we normally don't announce it until after one, just yep. so we can make sure we give 24 give hours to everybody. To yeah. And then, so remember to go over to YouTube. We've got very exciting content coming up. Um, Make sure you let us know what you want to see. Um, we want to show you whatever you want to know about with stencils and crafting and DIY. So we'll see you next week. See you next week.